Okay, as we all know, whenever we have a plus b squared, this is very easy. The answer is just a squared plus b squared. But have we ever thought about what if we have some other power instead? Maybe let's say the power is n. In that case, what's a plus b to the nth power then? Oh well, before I show you guys this right here, I will have to come back to here and cross this out. Whoa! Because this is not correct, because this is actually one of the biggest mistakes for all the algebra students, right? And let me explain why. <laughs> so here's the deal. When you have a second power, we can look at a square, and we can talk about this geometrically. So let's draw a square, and let's say this right here is A, so we'll make a cut, and let's say from here is also A, and let's make another cut. And I'll label this as A, and this is B, and likewise on the side, this is A, this is B. And we'll find the areas of these rectangles and squares inside. Notice that the first one is just going to be a times a, right? Because we have the area of a square, and we get a to the second power. And notice, we are trying to find the area of a square. That's why the second power is also called the square. Anyway, right here, it's just b times a, a times b, right? So let's put on a, b, and this right here, again, we can put on a, b, a times b. And this right here is just b times b, so we have b to the second power, namely b squared. So, from this picture, you can see that a plus b squared will be, first we need 1 a squared, and we need a b a b twice. So we have to multiply by 2 with the a b. So let me put down 2 a b like this. And right here, lastly, we have the b squared, which is just one of them. So let's put down 1 b squared. Earlier, we didn't have the 2 a b. Therefore, this was not correct. So the idea is that whenever we have a binomial raised to a power, we cannot just put a power here, put a power there. So when we have a plus b to the nth power, we cannot just put a power n, put a power n, n right there, right there. It's not correct. Right? And I will show you guys what we call the binomial theorem for this right here. And also show you guys as a bonus the generalized version of the binomial theorem. So be sure to watch the whole thing. By the way, if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Thank you guys so much. Okay, now here's the deal. I will show you guys another one. Let's see we have a plus b to the third power. In this case, what will we get? Well, yes, you are right. This right here is a square. You literally draw a square. When you have a third power, you will have to draw a 3D version, namely a cube. But I'm not going to draw that. I will just do this algebraically for you guys, okay? So draw the cube, like the 3D version, on your own. And you cut, 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 cut on your own, right? But you can also write this down three times and just multiply out everything if you would like. And I will tell you guys the answer. The answer is 1 a to the third power n plus 3 a squared b plus 3 a b squared and lastly we plus 1 b to the third power. Don't worry, I will tell you guys what the secret is. That's the cool part, right? So this is a plus b to the third power and let me do one more for you guys. Of course, the next one will be a plus b to the fourth power and some of you guys might notice the pattern if you haven't seen this before but anyway, the first one is going to be 1 a to the fourth power and the next one is going to be plus 4, a to the third power, b to the first power. And then the next one is going to be plus 6, a square, b square, and then we add 4, a, b to the third power, and lastly, we add 1, b to the fourth power. Some of you guys might see the pattern, this right here will go on like that, but I would actually go back a little bit because let's talk about the first power and also the zeroth power as well. So we can complete what we call the Pascal's triangle. So let's go ahead and go back. A plus B to the first power. Choose to be tall. This right here is the only time you can put a one here and one there. Because it's the first power. It's the one of the boring power, right? But anyway, don't get too excited. It only works for the one. And you end up with just one A to the first power plus 1b to the first power. See how exciting is this, right? Well, I'll show you guys something that's more exciting. The zeroth power. When we have a plus b to the zeroth power, this is extremely nice because the answer is just nicely equal to 1. 
assuming the input doesn't become zero, right? So this right here is equal to one. And now if you guys look at all the red numbers, namely the coefficients, this is what we call the Pascal's triangle. And of course, I will write this down right here for you guys. So here we go. Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle. So this is how you generate or how you construct the Pascal's triangle. You start with one. And then next you go one, one, right? So you just do one, one. And next you are going to put down one, two, one. So let's put down one, two, one. And next you can put down one, three, three, one. So I will do that, one, three, three, one. And without looking at this, in fact, to figure out the next row, this is what we do. For example, take a look of this three. The reason we get this three is because one plus two is three. Three is the same as one plus two. One plus two is three. Anyway, it's this two, one plus this two will give you the three, okay? Likewise, this two plus this one will give you the three. So for the next row, what you will do is, of course, you start with one, and then you are going to do this plus that, which is four, and then you are going to do this plus that, which is six, and this plus that, which is four, and lastly, you just have the one. So notice, this will be the pattern, and if you do multiply this out, like right, a plus b, a plus b, a plus b, a plus b, you end up with this and have some fun with it. But I think I'll show you guys this right here. It's much faster. All right, here is the deal. Let's write this down, okay? So I will call this going to be, I will call this to be the zeros row. And I will label that as n equals zero, which will correspond to our exponents right here. And this right here is going to be n equals one. And you guys get the deal, n equals two, and then n equals three, and this is n equals four. So you look at the row horizontally, and another thing you have to look at is this kind of diagonal, right? So if you look at this right here, we will call this part right here to be k, and again, we start with zero. This is the first diagonal, k equals zero. And then for this right here is when k equals one, and then when k equals two, and k equals three, k equals four, and so on, of course. Right, so you have two directions to look at, of course. And let me just give you guys an example. For example, right here, how did we end up with this six right here, okay? Well, well, we have a notation for it. This right here, it's called the combinatorial notation. What you can do is, first you put down whatever the end is. So you have four, and then you're going to put down whatever the k is. There's no horizontal line. This is not meant to be a fraction. It's just a parenthesis with four, and then you put down a two like that. And the language that we'll be using to say this is four choose two. And the way to compute this is, you see you have four. You start with four, and then you see you have two. So you're going to have two numbers on the top. So you start with four, and then you go down by one, which is three, and you stop. And then on the bottom, you start with two, and then you do two factorial, meaning you just go two and all the way to one, which is just two times one. And if you work this out, on the top is six, on the top is 12, over two is six. I said the answer before I tell you guys what to do. Anyway, this is pretty much the deal. You can imagine that this right here will be four choose three. If you work it out, four times three times three, 2 divided by 3 times 2 times 1. That will also give you this number in red, which is 4. So you can work that out on your own. So let me just write this down for you guys. As you can see, this triangle will tell us the coefficients of each term. So I'm going to put that down. We need to know the n choose k right here. So let me write it down. We need to have the n choose k. And let's take a look of this right here. This term, right, this coefficient 6, which is corresponding to this term right here. So I need to put on the a, b on the side right here as well. And now we have to pay attention to the power. Well, notice we have this 2 right here. Why? Because, of course, you see the pattern is 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0 is power, right? Well, this 2. Why, how did we get the 2? <laughs> it's like saying 4 minus 2. You start with 4, and it goes down by 
one each time, four, three, two, one for the A. So I will start with whatever this is, right? If this is 17, this will also be 17. So if this is N, this will also be N, but you have to make sure you subtract whatever the K is. So we will have to do N minus K for the power of the A, and then for the B, as you can see, this right here is k equal to 3, and you have the b is to the third power. So b is to the k's power like this. And the truth is that if you write this as a to the k's power times b to the n minus k's power, that's fine too. Nobody will get mad at you because you can look at this backwards. Anyway, this right here is just one term of this expansion, but we do have many terms. So we are going to add them up because as you can see, we have multiple terms. Therefore, we are going to add them up. This is the summation. And you have to go from k equals 0 to whatever the n is, right? So we will write this down. k equals 0 up to n, right? So this is where the k is. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the so-called binomial theorem. And of course, I will write this down right here for you guys. Binomial theorem which is extremely useful whenever you have to expand a binomial. And you have some other applications for some problems as well as show you guys, okay? And here's the general formula for n choose k. I will also write this down right here, where n choose k is equal to, the general formula is that on the top, you can put down n factorial divided by, on the bottom, you can write down k factorial times n minus k factorial like this. But in my opinion, if you want to compute this by hand, it will be easier if you remember what I showed you guys earlier, right? And here are some of the conventions I will have to tell you. First of all, the n factorial, this is how we you know, multiply out if n is a positive whole number. When we have n factorial, this is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times dot 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 times 3, 2, 1 right, if n is a positive whole number. And when we have zeros factorial, by definition, in this case, or by convention for this purpose, zero factorial is equal to one. And if you want to know more about why, you can check on my other video. I gave you guys four reasons for that already, so check that out. So this is true for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Positive whole numbers for the n. So this is how we compute it, right? So this is cool. And now perhaps I'll give you guys a question so you guys can see how useful this right here is. And I'll show you guys why this right here is the case. And I'll also give you guys some combinatorial argument. So let's go ahead and find out, find the coefficient, right? The coefficient of, let's say, x to the second power y to the third power term. In the expansion, let's say we have x plus y to the fifth power. And perhaps let me make it slightly interesting. Let's put down a 2 right here, okay? 2x plus y to the fifth power, OK? All right, here is how you are going to do it. Check this out. Of course, you look at the 5. You have to know that the n is equal to 5. And you pay attention to this right here. This will tell you n minus k. You may not like that. You may want to use this right here for your k. That's fine too. So look at this right here. Right? So this is, how, this is how you do it. Of course, I'll do it in blue. What we'll do is we do n, which is 5. And we have to choose 3 right here. Right? Again, if you look at the coefficient of a to the first power, b to the third power, all you have to do is 4 choose 3, or 4 choose 1. In fact, 4 choose 3 versus 4 choose 1, they are actually the same, because this is symmetrical. You can see that this triangle is symmetrical, so cool. In another word, 5 choose 3, it's the same as 5 choose 2. But you know, so it doesn't really matter how you do it. But I will just do 5, and perhaps, Let's focus on 5 choose 3, because this right here is the k. But you also have to know you have this as your a, and this right here as your b. Right? This right here is your a, and this right here as your b. 
So the idea is that you have to do 2x, right? And if you put down 3, if you match with this notation, this right here will be raised to the second power, and the y will be raised to the third power. This and that match, right? The k and k match, if you follow this format. And this right here, you have to remember, they have to add out to the power. So 2 plus 3 will be 5, of course. And then right here, you are just going to work this out. So here we go. If I choose 3, I'll show you guys how to do it. 5 times 4. I forgot 4, I'm sorry. <laughs> if I choose 3, you do 5 times 3 times... If I choose 3, you do 5 times 4 times 3. And then you are going to divide it by 3 factorial, 3 times 2 times 1. So again, you put down 3 numbers on the top, starting with 5, and you go down. And then for the bottom, you just do 3 factorial, and then you have this. And you can work this out real quick, and check this out. If you cancel the 3, this is precisely 5 choose 2, right? But anyway, this right here is going to be 20 over 2, which is 10. So now you have 10 times, you have to work this out, of course, so you have 2 squared, which is... Four, and then this is the x square, and this right here is y to the third power, like that, right? So of course, you have to multiply 10 and 4, which is 40, and then x square, y to the third power. And if you want to talk about the answer right here, the answer is just 40, right? So the answer is just 40. Let me see where I can put it down for you guys. Hmm, just put down. Answer to this question is 40, because it's right here and we are done right so that's the quick way to figure out the coefficient of some term in a binomial expansion this is why that we need to have the five choose three and of course i will write it down right here for you guys so i will give you guys a combinatorial explanation and to do so we have to look at x squared y to a third power again so as we all know x squared y to a third power this right here we know it can be x squared, which is just x times x, and then y to the third power, which is just y times y times y, isn't it? Yes. But notice, yes, this will give you x squared times y to the third power, but this is not the only way, because I could have done it as this, x times y times y times y, and then times x. How's that? You see, we have x squared, and then we have y times y times y, which is y to the third power. And of course, I can have done it as x, y, x, and then y, y. This will also produce x squared y to a third power, right? So when you expand this, as you know, the first term has the x, the second term has the y. You just have to think about in how many ways can we actually produce 2x from here and then 3 y's right here. So here is the deal. The idea is that whenever you multiply this out, 2x plus 5 to the fifth power, right? The x and y, x and y, you have to multiply out all of that. And let me just write this five spots right here. And the idea is that among these five spots right here, you have to ask yourself, in how many ways can we choose three of these to become the y's? So of course, for this example right here, we can choose here, here, and here to be the y's. And of course, you have a lot more. And how many more in total? We have a total of 10 ways of doing so. You have to ask yourself how many times you can, how many ways you can choose three places to become the y among these five spots. Therefore, that's why it's five choose three. Another way to look at this right here is that you see, once you have the y's done, of course, the rest will be the x. But you can also look at this as maybe five spots right here and think about how many ways can we choose two spots to become the x first. In that case, maybe if you use this again, for example, you can pick this and that to be the x. And the rest will be the y. So the truth is, when you have five choose three, this right here is actually equal to I choose 2. This is called the binomial coefficient. And of course, because you have the 2 in front of the x, that's why you have to take this to the second power and all that stuff. So that's pretty much it. And I think this is enough for this video. I, I'm sorry, I will actually do the generalized version of the 
binomial theorem for you guys in the next video, right? So here's the deal. Maybe you guys can leave a comment down below and let us know. This right here is the jet for all positive whole number n and also zero. It's you know it's trivial, trivially true. But what if the n is I say negative two, negative five? Instead, can this still work? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe you have to fix something a little bit to make it work. I don't know. You have to watch the next video, so stay tuned. Anyway, hopefully you guys all like this video though. If you guys are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and also give me a like for this video. Thank you guys so, so, so much. Thank you. As always, that's it.